Here we go. Okay, so I gave you the explanation of why the chord movement, the wandering majors. I do have a deeper music theory explanation beyond just giving it a label saying, well, those are wandering majors. That doesn't explain them. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying these are wandering, ma they're wandering. Mm -hmm. But there is a music theory thing that is a little too geeky for me to get into about why they actually work in the connection. I once talked about, if you look in your old videos, I've mentioned it on more than one occasion, the play between parallel and relative right. within the same situation. Uh, you play with that, you know. Right. Basic, the quick way is like this. Um, the one, four, five of a key. Then you go up a step and a half and do the one, four, five in a key there. And you mix all those chords together and you have the wandering majors. There's a reason for it. It has to do with relative major and minor, okay? Okay. So one, four, five in G, for example, and if we're dealing with the key of G, and then one, four, five in B flat. Okay. So, uh, we won't go into that now. And you could go backwards too, by the way. You okay. can go from C to A and do the 1, 4, 5 in C and the 1, 4, 5 in A, if okay. that makes sense. So it's a step and a half from your original key. Okay. That's how wandering majors work. But really, all you do is take a major chord and go like this. Usually whole steps and half steps, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. So it follows a scale. It actually follows a Dorian shape. Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, something like that. Okay. All right. Now, all right. So, what's happening in this song? We got. Uh, now he does the same thing in D minor. exactly that. Let me just check. Let me just hear it. I'm not, you know, I didn't study up on this. Let's hear it. Oh yeah, that's interesting. God, it's so creative. You think he'd follow the same exact pattern, okay. but he doesn't. I got it. It's going to take a second. Um, uh, maybe it's, no, it's not B flat. What is it? Sorry about this. That's all right. That's what I get for being fun. Alright, so 
Uh, again, we have wandering majors, but in totally different kinds of uh, order now. The other one was kind of a scalar order, almost just all ascending. Mm -hmm. Here we have D minor, F, C, B flat, and then they do that. It's just an excuse to get to the uh, that part. So again, first half of it, A minor, and then we have the... A minor, C, D, F, G, A minor. Now we're in D minor. And then we have D minor, F, C, B flat. Or whatever. I think that might be it. But in any case, um, so if we look at that one, we have D minor to F to C to B flat. There's a whole step right there. Two major chords a whole step apart. Remember, in the chord family template, that gives us a clue what key we're in. Because it's only one place where there's uh, two major chords a whole step apart, four and five. Okay. So if this is four and this is five, this must be the key of F. Okay. One, four, five. It should sound like good loving. One. Yes. All right. So that's a one, four, five, and F. All right. So we have... D minor, F, C, B flat. Now, let me just, let me really lock down what they're doing on that okay. little lick. Yeah, that's it. It's, um, they're just doing fourths. Okay. Perfect fourths. And it actually has no, it's just an excuse to get to the next section. Yeah. It's a mini bridge. Okay. You know, there should be a word for that. Like, there, there should be a musical term for, like, a little link. You know, <laughs> it's not a bridge, but it is a bridge. Maybe it's a footbridge. Desi semi-quaver bridge. Hmm? Desi semi-quaver bridge. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, uh, so we have that. Again, that's D minor, F, C, B flat, then in fourths from the fifth fret on the D string, or the A string to the D string. And first ever chord used by the Beatles, and probably in pop music up until that point, is the flat nine chord. And they use it in such a way, the flat nine chord is very dissonant. Remember I've talked to you about this interval that shows up in chord building called the minor ninth, and it creates extreme dissonance you may have vaguely a long that. time ago it's part of my my full music theory mm -hmm. um, and uh, it never worked I'll give you an example of a minor ninth and a major seven chord to okay. give you an example the way it works is like that here's a major seven chord and it's G major seven is G B D F sharp notice how how soft and fuzzy okay. and loungy and mm -hmm. everything's nice right we're in Brazil okay but this note here is G, and this note here is F sharp. If I were to count up one, two, three, four, five, six, that's seven steps. And that's the major seven interval right there. Mm -hmm. But G and F sharp, if we put them, uh, you know, they're, they're actually next to each other. G is here, F sharp mm -hmm. is here. That's just an octave higher, mm -hmm. right? So what if I put the G here and the F sharp here? Now listen. No longer soft and fuzzy chord. Yeah. Yet it's the same four notes. But, but now I'm going to count up from the F sharp to the G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. That is the offensive uh, thing there. Okay. okay. Now when we go to an E7, I have said never ever use a, a, a minor ninth interval unless you're going for some weird effect. Mm -hmm. However, seventh chords by their nature are very complex. And they want dissonance and they want tension. Okay. Because why? Because you're gonna, it's going to take you somewhere for resolution, right? Mm -hmm. So when we have the uh, E7 flat 9 chord, if I count up, I believe, yeah, the offensive note is the F, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Really ugly by itself, but if you use it in a jazz context, probably sharp 9 going to flat 9. Very pretty. Yeah. Context. It's all about context. Ah. Location, location, location. There we are. Right? <laughs> Real estate and chords. Right? 
It's true with chords, though. It really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on, you know, like the use of a chord depends on where you place it, sure. especially a dissonant chord. Now, in this case, I think it was used really badly, and I think they should have used a sharp nine. That chord is a little too, like, it's meant to do something else than what they did with it. Oh. But it was interesting, you know. I would have gone... But they go... Now, the, the infamous bass line from Paul McCartney, everybody thought this was so hot. Now, it's based on the E. It's based on the E7 flat 9. And basically what he's doing, he's going chromatically down to E from the G note. Now, uh, an E7 chord has a G sharp in it, all right? Not a G note. Okay. But two things about it. One thing is that it's the, it's the actual sharp nine of the chord and that's allowable. And the second thing is passing so fast that it's not a bother. We just want to get to get to that E. Yeah. And that second tag phrase really like reinforces that E. It brings us, it really brings us to that mm -hmm. E. Okay. So that was a big Paul McCartney move everybody went nuts on. Actually he does some amazing bass on this song. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I mean, it's really prominent. I would actually like to, you know, one night I did like a real close listen to Abbey Road, just laid down, just listened, real close. And I realized, like, the bass work in that particular record is just amazing. Hmm. Everything is just in the right place. He, he really thought out what he was supposed to do. This is the influence from the Beach Boys. Oh. You know. And that whole record is really Beach Boys influenced. So um, on the way out here, I heard the Beach Boys doing "God Only Knows," and then I heard Cost Elvis Costello with the the, the string quartet doing, doing their, that song? their version of it. Beautiful! Oh, yeah. I gotta I gotta check that out. Yeah, well, that's from that whole album he did with the string quartet. Right. I mean, I've forgotten the name of their group, but yeah, and and there's a long, uh, long intro uh -huh. into it, and. Of course, your ears can tell. If you didn't know, if the Be the Beach Boys weren't before it, you would be kind of going, "Huh, that that sounds kind of Beach Boy." -like yeah, or something. yeah. You know, it's. Uh, but you're not sure. I I wanted to do some Beach Boys with the Venice Roosters. Mm -hmm. There is a remarkable quality in the way Brian Wilson wrote that I've seen in no other pop composer, not even the Beatles, in that. If you, like normally a Beatles song, you could take it to your guitar and just play it and it'll sound okay. But like the, the intro of, um, to California Girls, for example, I tried to work that out with my bassist and me on the guitar. And it didn't sound good. And the reason why was because he has all these different voices of the orchestra and all these like different instruments that are filling in the notes and it creates this color that it just doesn't work if you're not using the same exact instruments. Huh. That's a very bizarre thing. That's very Ravel. You know, Ravel was a colorist. Well, now, is that him? Th is that an arranger doing that, or is that... That's him. That's, yeah, that's him. unbelievable genius there. Because how do you think that? I don't even know how to think that way. Huh. Honestly, I don't. That, that's like he was hearing something that I've... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, he's always been a little out there. You know? <laughs> so well, I think he's the reincarnation of some heavyweight classical dude. Because <laughs> he's, he's just like... His stuff is really classical sounding. Oh, man. It really is. God Only Knows is an amazing song. Um, that chord is a jazz chord normally used. This is called a B over A. It's basically a B, B chord with the seventh and the bass, which is very rarely used. So, if you, if you should have a Now, I get chills when I come to that line right there. It, yeah. I mean, the way all these chords build up and move to the... It's... McCartney, it, it was right. It's probably the, the most beautiful love song ever written in the pop music huh. field. All right, let's do another quick break.